on the case. <laughs> Maybe he watches Bulldog stream as well. Maybe. So far, everyone who's won has come on and said, oh, I watch, they watch Bulldog stream, so. God, don't tell him that. We don't need any more reason for Bulldog to lord over us. Well, Pepita was saying it's because he was learning how to not play Dark Seer, so. Oh, smart. Uh, yeah. Smart. That's I what... always knew I liked Pepita. <laughs> Zai's having a good time over here, though. We get that taunt right off the bat as he uh, dances his way to the lane. So how do you think these lanes are going to end up going here? Um, yep, so we're going to secure this off lane for Zai, just denying some range creeps. Um, that's also going to you know, slow down Paparazzi's farm a bit, and then you can use that conversion to also kind of farm the jungle a bit, secure last hits in lane. Uh, that's going to be what, against the troll plus one. Uh, I don't think either team necessarily wants to go for a tri lane. Batride is one of those heroes that struggles on his own in a 1v2 or 1v3. So Fade more likely is going to try grab creeps from behind the so tower. I don't think this is a dual lane they can easily contest until they get level 2, level 3. So realistically, they're going to want to probably pull a wave or two from behind the tower. Got it. So we're going to see more of a, just a relaxed start, nothing too wild right off the bat, you think? Yeah, and once there's a few levels, like Bat Rider, Earth Spirit, a lot of kill potential, except the problem is it's a life seal, and that's where mm -hmm. that's why the secret picked this life seal. It's a great carry. Um, a lot of teams are first picking it. We saw both NA, NASA teams, Mason as well as uh, Moo play the hero as a first pick worthy hero, but uh, this game it's a fourth pick, and it's a great life seal game. Yeah, absolutely. We already talked about the fact that, you know, it counters the Batrider in lane, being able to get rid of that sticky napalm, and uh, just kind of a value pick. Although, yeah, just going to casually roll on through here. Faye taking a little bit of damage from Nisha, but already it begins. Faye wants to get to that side shop to grab his boots, I imagine. Um, he's going to use those fast boots to just help him pull waves and not take too much damage. Uh, it doesn't really... It's, Spending 500 gold is not on an item that doesn't really secure your lane, really suggests, yeah, he doesn't really want to play this lane until a bit later on when they get some levels. Mm -hmm. Do you see a little bit of harass, though, coming out again from Yang here? But uh be interesting, because, like, the the name of the game, too, right, is when you have a life steal, is you want to be able to kite. And that's going to be something that's going to be very important for the side of Vici Gaming to yeah. be able to pull off, but also to disrupt his farming, too. And he does have quite a few stacks on him right now. So they are taking advantage of the fact that, you know, he does not have that rage just yet. So we'll try to put out as much of her ass as possible. And Nisha's just like, well, I've got Feast. I'm going to do my the best thing I can to trade right clicks with you. But at some point, Nisha needs to back off and reset these Napalm stacks. You can't just sit there with seven, eight, nine, ten stacks for days, especially if Batrider gets level two before you do. Suddenly, you're just dead. So uh, Nisha, I think, is going to win that race level two because their lane is pushing out. So uh, at this point, he can just use that rage if needed. Yeah, we're taking a look here in the top lane. We've got the troll and the oracle doing their thing together, and of course, I and Yaps are hanging out. But uh, to get that root thrown out over onto Yaps are trying to just harass a little bit, but it's not the uh, most fantastic wave clear coming out from this particular duo, so we'll be able to be a bit annoying with those Eidolons. Yeah, it's just the strength of the Enigma able to secure your offlane with those denies over a mid, big CS advantage going mid one's way. And we saw this a lot with the Death Prophet versus Shadow Fiends, where Death Prophet isn't the strongest laner. That, that's where the hero saw the biggest fall off over the years, is just a lot of these early spells have just gone a lot weaker. be interesting to see though once uh you know we do pick up that ultimate on the death prophet just how active she's going to actually be with the rotations and uh, the pressure that she's going to be able to put on the map too yeah and that's something uh somebody talked about in the before the game Zai tall ah, Zai's fine uh, if, walk it off. if Ori can get good runes, he's a player that loves to get active on the map. And somebody was complaining, you know, whenever they play Vici, he seems to get these great runes that just allow him to gank the side lanes and control the game. That's what he wants this game. Haste on Death Prophet, um, one of the best you can get. And if you can find runes like that, he's going to be ganking side lanes and pushing towers. So a lot of it's going to come down to rune control is what you're thinking here. Although bottom lane needs to be a little bit careful here about right take a decent chunk of damage. Is going to be able to, though, hide into the trees. And he's just still on the hunt, though, hoping he can cut him off over here. That just kind of rolling around in circles, trying to put down as much Firefly as possible. Nisha take a bit of a bath, but oh, he runs right into the arms of Life Stealer, and there it is. There's our first blood. Puppy's blinding lights have been incredible in this bottom lane. He blinding lighted him into the tier one tower so that he took tower damage there and got it completely out of position. We do have a bit of a gank going on here in the mid lane, though. Mid one, gonna get rolled in. They just 
do the best he can, but there's the TP Another coming out from Puppy. He's going to be able to help get a kill over onto Fade, and mid one's actually going to be just fine here. Ori now going to have to run away, has taken some decent amount of tower damage. Is just uh, trying to get off a couple of these value clicks here, but needs to be super, super careful. Because uh, Death Prophet, you now she's uh, decently speedy, but needs to be able to dodge that Illuminate. Not going to be able to do it. Still sitting very low. They'll turn back around, though, hoping to maybe get a uh, little bit of a return kill over here on Puppy. Puppy still should be able to run himself away from Fade. Boot, He's pretty fast. Oh, the Sticky Napalm coming out from Yang Tae will be able to slow him down. Another Blinding Light pushes them right back again. Puppy says, go away. I don't want to, but there's the roll forward, and there's the kill. Still waste a lot of their time. That was three heroes, the Death Prophet, and then the two other heroes rotating in just to deal with Puppy. Uh, the problem is mid one, I think he lost his salve yet, so he's forced to buy another salve, Tango's, and that casual ring of regen, which he's going to turn into an early Hedris. So mid one's lane gets a little bit messed up because of all that, uh, but Puppy very active and very involved early on. Yeah, it's nice to see such an active Coddle coming out here. And again, like you said, the Blinding Lights have been on point. Yeah. It saved them, uh, you know, bought them a little bit more time when they're going for that chase through the jungle. And of course, that bounce back over on the tower. But And when you see all those heroes mid, you're, you're just thinking of your secret. Well, Nisha's free farming during this. Mm -hmm. And he, I feel like this is something secret does better than every other team. All the games I've seen so far, I look at the carry CS, and it's always Nisha having a free farming lane, while the other carry, in this case Paparazzi, has his lane being contested. Uh, Paparazzi is still farming well, but it's not, not quite as well as what Nisha's got. So then what's the play here? Do you try to, uh, do you make these rotations back towards the bottom, or does that end up, you know, do you end up suffering anyways because you're paying too much attention to being sort of, not reactionary, but... Right now it's towards top because they want to contest these bounty runes. Okay. They want to send three heroes top to try to get both bounty runes up there, and then Batrider can try and secure some down bottom. But Zai, he's going to get a bounty rune. He dies for it. Dyer's kind of 50-50, whether that's worth it. It's a pretty even trade, the bounty rune for your life. Uh, he was so low on health and mana that dying and coming back to lane full health is actually not too bad for him, so I think he doesn't mind that death. Feels like mid's pretty evenly matched up right now, though. You've got the uh, 20 and 10 over on the OD, 19 and 9, of course, over on Death Prophet. But the kick back here over onto mid one, they run him into place, and uh, he's trying to get that Oracle, but he's not going to be able to. Purifying Flames will secure the kill. Yeah. DY, not the ideal outcome where he gets the last hit for the kill, but he just wants to make sure that he doesn't die there. So he just does all the nuke damage he can. And Oracle, I think, always talked about for the save potential, but early game Oracle does a lot of nuke. The level three. Um, with two points in Purifying Flames on such a short cooldown, 2.25 second cooldown, that's a very big nuke, particularly when you can purge off the hill using the Fortune's End and get a double uh, nuke off in quick succession like that. You just have to be paying attention, though, to the cooldown on, of course, your uh, Q, because it does take a while to come back up again. Yeah. So you have to be very careful that you're not, you know, being a little too cheeky with it and uh, paying attention to when it is indeed off cooldown. Or else you're just healing them back up again if you don't have enough nuke. Yeah, you always you always have to burst. It's, yeah, that's the thing. It's the true definition of a burst spell, because if you don't burst them, you're healing them. Dive coming out here. They had their eyes over onto Zai, but the TPs are coming out. Blinding Light's going to get used. They'll be able to root this to make one to place. Yapster trying to run himself up, but they've got that spell siphon. It's not going to be quite enough to take down Yapster. He's actually going to make it out alive. They'll turn their attention, though, now over onto Zai. His exorcism is going to get used. And they're just going to back off here. They just managed to walk all the way behind. Puppy might be in for some trouble. In fact, yes, he will be the sacrificial lamb. But uh, ghosts have been popped. They didn't manage to take down Yapster. Ford's going to come out. And Ori's just going to start putting that pressure down here on the tower. The Ori runes, they've begun. Uh-oh, uh-oh. That is not the place that you want to be, my friend. DY's going to get taken out. It's found, but they will get the T1 tower. No deny in range as Ori gets the last hit as well. Has an arcane rune for that gank, so he's going to have a very low cooldown on that exorcism as a result and didn't have to expend too much of his mana pool as well for it. Nisha slowly but surely chipping down Yang as he's trying to fly his little wings out of there. He's going to be able to get out in time. Yes, he will, but he's going to sit very, very low in the process. He even gets two denies on those creeps. That's like salt in the wound there where Batrider TP comes in, instantly gets zoned out of the lane, loses some creeps, and Lifestealer is having the freest game of any hero right now. He hasn't had any sort of problems coming out from the side of Ichi. They've been paying a lot of attention to mid. They obviously put some pressure on the top lane, but uh, definitely, you know, you don't want to let Lifestealer, especially Nisha Lifestealer, you don't want to allow him to just have this free movement about the map and just yeah. farming to his heart's content because he's going to have that uh, Midas pick up very quickly otherwise. They can't really slow him down is the problem. They can send heroes down bottom um, with the next exorcism, but what's going to happen is Lifestyle will just say, okay, you're, they're, they're coming bottom, I can't fight them, I'm going to go top, or I'm going to go jungle. Mm -hmm. 
and wherever Vici Gaming go, life is going to be on the other side of the map. And that's okay for Vici Gaming. What they have to make sure of is that they're getting objectives, towers, and kills away from the life seal because at this rate, life seal is going to have that free farm Midas radiance mm -hmm. at you know twenty ish minutes. So it's all about trying to take away the jungle from him. Yep. That's what you're saying. And yeah, if you take these, yeah, taking these early towers really does limit mm -hmm. with how much of the map he can farm. If you take the mid tier one early, the bottom tier one, suddenly he can only really farm maybe the top lane uh, and has pretty much his entire jungle removed from him. And yeah, they're going to rotate down bottom just like that. And they mm, will actually the lasso. Catch Yeah, they're going to turn their attention. They pop the exorcism too. It's not going to matter if you got rage there, Nisha, because it's going to be able to just start streaming through you with that physical damage, but into the uh, imprisonment here. Misha's just going to pop on out and walk away. And that's where it's, I felt like they should have been prioritizing going for objectives and other heroes with these rotations because you can't actually kill this life still. Like, that's that's why this hero is so good is that, um, I mean, obviously he hits this power peak when he gets his items, the Midas Radiance, but he's, what do you do to stop him getting there? There's not a whole lot except with specific heroes that counter him. And that is going to be the exorcism Radiance on cooldown without any sort attack. of kill or objective that got taken. I think they just backed off and used it to farm. So that's pretty nice for Secret right now, not having to deal with that, because that's kind of the big early game pressure that's being placed upon them. Yeah. And for Vici, your game plan needs to be have Troll try and match the life seal in terms of farm. The Troll can, he's going to go for the Battle Fury. Um, he needs to be the hero that matches up, and he's about a thousand gold in terms of net worth behind, but that's not the end of the world if he just plays the same with life still while the other four heroes try and you know fight take objectives create space uh he'll quickly catch back up all right well batrider unfortunately has run into three heroes on the side of secret he's gonna try to fly himself out but they actually dropped the sandy's oh, eclipse it's not yeah. quite enough damage so he should be feeling pretty good about that now zion for some trouble purifying flames followed up with this swap they're gonna turn their attention back around but there are three heroes here as well he and gets i the don't think rune. he's gonna be able to make it out alive although he's trying pretty hard but there it is he got the powder in though. He's happy. That's why he used that swap there. Yeah. He, he, he's not trying to escape. He knows he's dead. And he's like, well, from once again, Zai gives well. away his life. Is under attack. It's I mean, you're dead either way. So it's definitely worth it. And the the death for support deaths for banner runes, I would say always worth it. Core death and maybe not quite as much. We did pick up uh, an arcane rune over on the bat rider during all that, too. And he has lasso up. So I think we might be seeing some play come out from the side of Ichi Gaming. We'd yeah. like to not see them jump after this life stealer again. Like you said, it's just too hard for them to pin him down, but perhaps they can find another target. Yeah, maybe go for that mid-tier one with the next exorcism. Fat Rider looking for a fast boot to travel, so it does seem like Vici Gaming is going to be playing a game where they don't want to just go for this fast blink dagger where you're all in on finding these blink lasso ganks. The drums is the other option you sometimes see, but Boots of Travel is just this item where you can be anywhere on the map very quickly. You farm very fast. It's a very efficient item to have on a bat rider. And Nisha just being left to his own devices down here. About 6k net worth, 4.9 over onto Troll. And again, there is a Midas picked up at about 9 minutes for the Life Stealer, so... And right, realistically, this game right now is just smooth sailing for Secret. They're only up 1k gold, but they have an Enigma free farming the jungle, Arcane Boots, halfway to a BKB almost, Life Stealer, Midas, 1k gold. Radiance is looking like it's going to be coming out at a very good time. Secret's getting everything they need out of their draft right now. Booster Travel did just get picked up, though, on the bat rider, like you said, so we'll be able to see him be a bit more mobile. And also, uh, do you get that smoke coming out? He has that arcane rune still bottled up. He's looking to make some sort of a play, but I'm worried that they're going to be going after this lifesteal again. Puppy's standing on the high ground. Actually, will pop the smoke. They realize someone's there. The firefly comes out. All right. So he's already just dipped at this point. Yeah, paparazzi playing very aggressive. Does it back up nearby? Needs to not get too far Dyer's away from the rest of his team. Is under attack. I think at this point, VG Gaming need to decide fortified. which lane they want to commit to. They're going to send Batrider top, but he, he's got the double TP. That's the really powerful thing about these Boots of Travel is you can defend a lane by TPing there, and then you've got the Boots of Travel teleportation to go to where another lane where your team is for a team fight. Yeah, no, that was a really big change when they were uh, switching up the Boots of Travel, so helps very, very much. And then sometimes, you know, we've been seeing a lot of the heroes where you can actually just recall people, right? And just bring them right back into fights against so you've got so much mobility yep. coming out with this change. So that's why he's the one TPing top while it looks like the rest of the team posturing around bottom lane a bit. Um, not too aggressively, the troll's still mid, but uh, the issue I have right now with Vici Gaming is they're just not committing somewhere on the map. And as a result, they're being out-farmed. Enigma in the jungle, 
Life still with the Midas. We're seeing he's maintaining that farm lead over the troll, actually increasing it from about 1,000 to 1,200, small amount. But when you're talking about carries who are both free farming, that's going to just increase over time. And that's not what you want to see if you're beach gaming. No, I think, uh, like you said, they should be making some moves across the map, doing, taking some objectives, especially now that they have the exorcism up. It just feels like they really want to do something about this troll, and they just can't figure out exactly what it is. Yeah. So, you know, taking over this tower will probably help. But again, you're just going to see him, you know, making rotations, mirroring their movements. I might be in for a little bit of a trouble. Uh, we'll get attacked here by Paparazzi. There's going to be a rotation coming out from Faith as they throw out the silence. There's going to be Magic Missile coming through. Magnetize gets used as well. Blind Glide, nice save here. Coming out from Puppy. Is it going to be enough? The Zai ticking down pretty fast. He actually goes again. He's going to get taken down here as Puppy tries to run himself out. And he is in hot pursuit. Are they going to be able to catch him in time? It doesn't look like they are. In fact, the TPs were coming out from Secret. They'll Radiant's cancel them out. And they'll realize, all right, they just used quite a bit to chase after Zai. We're fine where we are. Let's continue to farm. Yeah, Yang actually died on the Batrider over in the jungle while that was all going on. He got killed off by the Enigma, I believe an Enigma plus one, life sealer maybe. So it wasn't really a, a good trade. It wasn't, I mean, it was a trade yeah, end of the day. It wasn't a win for Vici Gaming. They don't get an objective or a tower out of it. And that's something when they have this death profit, you'd expect them to be taking more objectives and they're just not really prioritizing that right now. Why do you think that is? Why don't you think we're seeing, you know, a, a smoke up um, with the death profit, the where you've got a good kit, you can allow your troll to kind of go and just farm off into the jungle, get what he needs, because you've got enough pressure with the, the lasso and, of course, the Death Prophet. Why do you think we're not seeing that, though? Uh, I think they feel like it's going to be a little bit inefficient Radiant's and too slow. Um, you've got Secret attack. who can farm the other two lanes and Coddle who can defend that wherever you push very well. Mm -hmm. uh, so until you have that initiation, like a like that right of Blink Dagger, tower. you can't punish fallen. Secret for defending towers. But... I would also say I think they should be trying that. They should be going for these towers. Exorcism should be, by now, used more than just once. But they didn't use it for the tier 1 tower because they want to use it for these bounty runes. Again, Zai's going for the rune, although Yapster makes his way over here. They go and they actually use the exorcism, so there's going to be the swap. Zai, look at him just run. They'll go and they'll use the black hole over here onto Fate. He's out of here. Followed up with that Willow Wisp too. Maybe not necessary, but... Uh, yep. And Zai, the king of these bounty runes today. Yeah. He's, he's, he's it, he wants it, he's got it. <laughs> he's dying for him, he's swapping himself to get them. That time he's getting out without dying. And you know, when you're playing this very slow paced game and your timing is the radiance of Lifestealer, using these ultimates like Black Hole, Will O Wisp, just to get a kill on an Earth Spirit and to secure a bounty room, well worth it. It's not like Secret's looking for a big team fight, so you don't mind that you put Black Hole on cooldown. Yeah, I was about to say, like, I think we've seen so much aggressive movement coming out from the side of Ichi Gaming where they're grouping up and not so much on the side of Secret. Yeah. And unfortunately, I a lot of those, uh, just the initiations that have happened from Vichy Gaming have turned a little bit on them where it's, they're the aggressors and they end up having to try to run away. Yeah, the, uh, the Midas efficiency has only had two seconds of uptime where it wasn't used. I mean, Nisha is just farming like a beast. I mentioned a 20-minute range now. He's saying I can do a couple minutes better than that. It's absolute free farm for him. Troll is keeping up, so it's not completely lost cause by any means. And this is just VG Gaming saying, we're going to go late game against you. Um, they are continuing to fall a bit further and further behind. It's not a 4k gold lead, but uh, they just feel like their best bet is getting these items like the Bat Rider Blink and playing the pickoff game and playing around Roshan, playing around Exorcism. It's just going to be very hard because Radiance is such a strong timing for Secret and then BKB Enigma, very hard to deal with as well. And we've also picked up the Guardian Greaves over on the OD now. So all these fights are going to be even more difficult. But there's the lasso getting used. Ren be able to drag back and they get the silence off over onto Zai. Zai has just been public enemy number one right now. He's turned back around. He's got that magic missile. We're going to see very the TP tanky. coming out here from that life stealer. And these Eidolons are doing a ton of damage. Zai trying to get himself out. Oh, not going to be able to do it just quite quickly enough. I think he even died in the fountain there right as he got to fountain. The last magnetized tick brought him down so a bit unfortunate for him but it's just once again Zai on the receiving end of these ganks he's four of the seven deaths of Team Secret but how do you gank the other lanes though too you know you've got an OD who can throw out the save you've got the fact that you know life skill is just hard to pin down and OD's farming all the safest places on the map OD's always very defensively farming jungle life skill like you say can't be ganked uh, it has been Zai who's been sent to the risky lanes to farm, and 
even in death, Zayas looked like a very impressive player. Like some of those deaths up top earlier on where he's getting bounty runes and making all the right plays. Like it doesn't look like he's making any wrong moves. And it's the Enigma who actually does more with farm than the Venge. So you're actually quite happy for your Venge to be creating space for these other three heroes since Enigma with a BKB blink is such a powerful force. Yeah, the BKB gets picked up right when you mention that too. It's going to come as the Radiance, Radiance is finished, too. So this is really where Secret can take these teamfights now. It's beautiful timing, too. Everything just kind of aligning perfectly for the side of Secret. Even though, you know, like you said, we've lost Zai several times, but I think he's okay with it. Again, he's been able to grab those runes. He knows that his death allows for, uh, you know, Midwan and Nisha to just accelerate and get what they need. So that way later on, it's going to be a problem. Yeah, I think Trolls, seeing some of these items is going to have to prioritize that BKB even sooner. You know, the Yasha, some Trolls like to go for the full SMY, but when you're playing into, you know, Radiance this early on and uh, Enigma, who's going to be coming to fights now, you've got to prioritize BKB. They're looking to push more objectives here, though. The restless side of uh, Vici. They're smoked up over in the corner. Hoping that maybe someone's going to TP into Shrine. And we do see TPs coming out over here. Mid one finds himself the uh, Earth Spirit Faith. They'll turn back around. They've got the Exorcism of the BKB coming out from the opposite. But he's going to get canceled out with a nice Lasso being thrown back here. And uh, they're going to have to go fighting over onto multiple grounds. They'll be able to go get the False Promise off. They'll turn back around here. Young's actually going to get taken now. He's already used that Lasso. And they're still trying to just take down Mid one as fast as they can. This could be the Space taken off, and can they get another hit over onto mid when they're trying so hard? He's actually going to make it out alive now, or he's going to get taken down as we lose four people to Nisha with that fresh radiance. Wow, I mean, that's the fight Secret wanted. They say, you're going to come at us and try and flank us from behind the tower? Great, we're ready to fight. We just got this radiance. We are ready to go. Look at that damage dealt by the life shield. He absolutely destroys the team fight alongside the OD, who got a really good Sandy's Eclipse. And the other big thing there is OD's item build. Having this Guardian Greaves, he got so incredibly low against the Exorcism, but once you get low health, that's when that Greaves aura kicks in and really starts to help yourself. 15 bonus armor and 16 health regen. That's so much armor to have at this stage of the game. And you'll see soon, once mid one starts getting low, he just gets incredibly tanky. It's insane, especially when you consider the fact that that fight was totally split, right? You had the one fight going on over on the high ground, and then while Death Prophet's running around here on the low ground, eventually you just see Nisha just calmly mock his way over. In fact, we've got another fight going on right now, as uh, looks like the side of Secret maybe doesn't want to fight this at this time. We'll just walk away, but they end up using the Magnetize during that. Yeah. I guess the one saving grace of that last team fight, if there is one, is that Paparazzi did not die, so he's still uh, farming at a pretty good rate here hasn't fallen off at all and once he has bkb that's really where you know it's one of those we got to do something impressive now uh death prophet also going for a bkb as her next item so uh the bkb timings of vici gaming in some ways maybe their last hurrah because the longer this game goes uh life still are getting more items to follow up this radiance enigma just lake him enigma is one of the scariest supports in the game OD as well is going to start scaling and getting other items to go with Greaves. VG Gaming's lineup does not scale the same way Secrets does. And again, it was very interesting because it almost felt like at one point, you know, the initiation coming out from Secret, they looked really good. You got that black hole off, but then at the same time, you had the Death Prophet going and using the Yules. You talked about the Guardian Greaves coming into play when the fact that, you know, OD was sitting very, very low. But then again, it's just, you know, the power of this, this lifestealer coming online and you know, the BKBs, again, they are getting picked up. That'll help against the OD. But Swap coming out, though. Top lane, Fate. And for some trouble, Puppy making his way over. Does manage to get the silence. Gets the roll off as well. But there's three heroes now chasing him up there. These blinding lights on point. There's the jump forward, though. They go and they try to put some more damage out. Willow Wisp got to get dropped, though. They'll turn around. Guardian Greaves coming through. They're trying to just nuke down the Coddle. They'll be able to find it. Now mid one over here into the trees. The roll forward coming out. We've got all of this exorcism coming through. They do find the kill, Paparazzi. Gonna be able to go and grab himself that. Now Zai trying to juke himself over into the trees that though they've got that sticky napalm they've got the ghost they've got the root and wow they getting Zai. that's a very rare like mistake from secret like a big team mistake i i feel like this tournament and you know katavice before this event where they went had their big undefeated streak every now and then there'd be a mistake you know where mid one plays too aggressive on his monkey king or you know zai gets caught out but that's a team decision go diving under that tier two tower and vici gaming were there ready to punish Exorcism being used very effectively and winning a fight before they have these BKBs online. So that's a nice little turnaround for Beachy Gaming, and that's going to give them some confidence moving forward. If they can somehow find a way to win a fight and then secure Roshan, this game can suddenly look a whole lot more even.
And I think it's gonna come down to, you know, finding those perfect movements, the right plays, getting the jump. Because otherwise, I feel like Secret, you know, like you said, they're very disciplined. It was a bit unusual for them to be going in, going in for those dives. And I'm almost wondering yeah. if they weren't anticipating, like, a full rotation like that, too. Definitely not, yeah. They, they were... VG Gaming were very fast to kind of react and get everyone there. There's a double damage rune in, on this troll, too, now. He has it bottled up, so we could see a potential team fight off of this or even a, an attempt to try and sneak Roshan. His BKB, if he can get that out with a DD, that's suddenly a really scary timing for them. That's really big. In fact, they're actually sitting in the pit. Yep, sir, is smoked up. Okay. Let's have the uh, black hole available. Bing, ping. Mm. Vici Gaming seem to know this, and they're going to have a troll BKB double damage for this fight. Uh, but if they're caught in a black hole, does it really matter? It may not, yeah. Right? Toying around with the idea again. Puppy going to reveal himself, hoping maybe to uh, bait them just a little bit. And again, Napster jumps forward, and there's going to be the uh, jump Alvar onto this side. And now there it is. The BKB Black Hole comes out. They're going to be able to go and hold on to this troll. He's in for a little bit of trouble. He's got his own BKB now. He's going to turn back around. Does a decent amount of damage here to Yapser, but I don't think they want to go in on this fight. Black Hole's, Black down, hole's down, but they Trolls need, BKB too. They need to reset, I think. Yeah, both teams do, I think. The the nice thing about the BKB on Troll is that, yeah, the Black Hole controls you, but you don't die in the Black Hole um, because all their damage is mostly magical at this point. Lifesteal is right-click damage with a Radiance. Um, it's not the scariest of things there, so Troll uh, doesn't die, does have to use his BKB, but if a team fight breaks out now, hey, well, no Black Hole to worry about. There is still, like, you know, Sandy's Eclipse, Coddle, there's so many other things that you do feel like you don't want to fight without your BKB, and that's where Vici Gaming back off, and... The other great thing, BKB, much shorter cooldown than Black Hole. So they may actually look to smoke once that BKB is back up to try and secure Roshan or take a team fight while Black Hole's down. And you have other means of save as well for the side of Ichi Gaming because you do have an Oracle. So Oracle, you know, if he notices that uh, his cores are in a bit of a pickle, is going to be able to just throw out that False Promise. He's going to be able to heal them up, do a couple different things here. Of course, Yang needs to be a little bit careful. He is... Uh, Flirt with disaster a bit, but they'll go right into the pit now. They know that they've got the exorcism, and that's uh, something that I don't think they really necessarily want to fight, because even if they can drop that willow wisp, you're still going to have all those ghostly spirits floating around the entire time. This is a sign of confidence that Vici Gaming feel like they can just walk into the pit in front of Team Secret. Uh, they do back off, so they decide maybe maybe this isn't the best plan, but no, yeah, they're just going to stick this out. They know there's no black hole, they have the BKB, and they feel like they have a very good position here with the Observer Watch. They're going to see Secret wrapping around. That rider was looking. There's the Willow Wisp, though, getting dropped. And there's the two BKBs coming out, though, from the side of Vici Gaming. They'll go and they'll use that Exorcism. They're going to actually have to go use that False Promise onto the Bat Riders. He's just trying to lay down all of this Firefly now. They'll turn their attention, draw back right now. They're going to be able to get the kill. Now there's going to be the swap coming through. They're going to need to do a little bit more damage here as the Illuminate comes out. They'll be able to finally take down Zai. They're still chasing after this lifestyle. They want him so badly. Are they going to be able to find it? They do find the kill over onto Nisha as it comes mid one once again. This is not looking great for the Oracle, but already he's done his purpose here. He's been able to keep his uh, Bat Rider alive. So he will actually fall to mid one. Now they're still walking over here on the pit. They've got that exorcism up for a little bit longer. They should be able to get this rope. And there it is. It's going to get picked up by Paparazzi. He's turn around again here. Mid one goes in. He throws that Astro Imprisonment now. Fade. He's looking for whatever he can find. In fact, they will be able to find themselves a puppy as he gets burnt to a crisp and Ori gets the kill. Man, that's such a good understanding of how to fight around Secret's big team fight. It's just, you know fight when Black Hole's down. <laughs> it's really that simple. The Black Hole was used, BKB comes back up, let's force a Roshan fight, and the warding around that Roshan pit. I love these unconventional wards because Secret's kind of coming around from the top side thinking, you know, we're going to come in and we're going to be in fog here because normally those wards are down near where those runes are, but that ward, it, it scouted the entire Secret approach and allowed Vici Gaming to go on the key targets there. It was interesting too, you talk about the unconventional warding. There was no wards over on the other side. So that way it allowed the bat rider to kind of creep on in there slowly but surely. And I'm sure they probably figured something's off. We don't see where a bat is, but maybe not necessarily thinking that it would be over on that side. So sat a little bit low, obviously. They had to end up using the false promise onto the Oracle, but, uh, or sorry, not the Oracle, sorry, the bat rider. Oh, yeah. But it ended up working out quite well because there was just so much chaos. They're fighting in a, a choke point, so to speak, and there's just Firefly everywhere. Yeah, and Enigma with this item build, the Blink BKB, doesn't really contribute much in a team fight um, without Black Hole. Mm -hmm. You're, I mean, Midnight Pulse is nice, but you're not keeping them in place without the Black Hole. It's not like this Enigma where you go for all these aura items like the Greaves, Crimson Guard, where, oh, my Black Hole's down, doesn't matter. I still contribute a lot with auras. It's, you're a Black Hole. Um, that's your contri big contribution. And if Yapsar doesn't have it, Secret have to be a lot more careful about what kind of fights they're taking. 
Mm, Swap coming out from Zai. They really want to see if they can grab him here. And they're going to have to go. Use false promise. Willow Wisp is up and running, though. Fade going to be the sacrificial lamb. They'll go. They'll push him back again. He's that buff. And now, is he going to be able to make it out? Papa Rusty is trying really hard. Oracle cannot do anything to help him. He's just too far back. He will go and pop the BKB. Go use that break as well. So it goes running right back at Bat Rider, though. On the other end, that's a BKB getting used. But you're hold in place. And Yaps are in for some trouble because there's just too many ghosts swimming after him. They're going to try to chase down Nisha. Now, Yule's coming through again. The Manta's actually going to get bought out. Harris going to go pop it. He's going to try to just run himself out of this fight. There's so many ghosts chasing him. Uh, luckily, that Astro Imprisonment, though, going to hold the Death Prophet in place. That's not going to be able to do it now. Or he's in for trouble. They're going to be able to go and nuke him down. He is out of here. Paparazzi also in for some trouble as well. He tried to go back in. Aegis is going to get popped here. And it looks like he is out of friends to really help him out because there's going to be the TP there. He's not going to be able to do it. Paparazzi just frantically trying to run over, maybe get some time over in that Firefly so they can at least put some damage down. But Thrall coming through here from Fade. Paparazzi still alive is uh, not looking so great for this Red Spirit. He's going to have to roll himself over onto the high ground. But we'll make it out. Okay. Some... <laughs> I mean, that's a, a good fight for Secret, end of the day. Uh, they lose their Enigma. Vici Gaming, though, they got a little bit overzealous gunning for that Enigma. I think they know their key to the team fight is making sure they don't get black holed. That's why they're gunning for Enigma. Problem is, they overcommit to it, Exorcism wears off, and then suddenly it's like, oh, OD's like, well, no one is BKB, I'm just gonna tear you apart. But some big individual plays allow Vici Gaming to escape. Also, they forced the uh, they forced the Enigma to use his own BKB as well yep. too, so that's going to make things a little bit easier for them Dyer's later on as it starts to run yeah. lower and lower. But. And once that Death Prophet's on top of you as, as an Enigma, you don't really want a black hole because you're going to die while casting it to those ghosts. Right. So that's kind of the key way they fought that one. The lasso was with the the Death Prophet. Troll was Dyer's never near the Enigma, which is a attack. great way to approach that fight. Um, problem was you yeah the rest of your team was a little bit out of position and was, wasn't quite on the same page committing Dyer's that deed. Tower has fallen. Looks like everyone on Secret's just gonna try to reset here. Take a moment, catch their breath, figure out their next plan. There's a double damage rune available in the bot lane right near Paparazzi. This is an Axe OD. I've seen this like once or twice ever before with this Axe step where you get the double Astral Imprisonment. Mm -hmm. So he's going to have several saves or several aggressive astrals. Ooh, and uh, looks like they might need a little bit of help here and go and just banish up the bat rider. That is going to be Lasso down. I don't think anyone TPs to yet, no. They're just going to let him go. But in the bottom lane again, Paparazzi is going to continue to just farm up, push that lane out. Kind of at that stage where Secret have all their ultimates. They want to fight. They'll chase Vici Gaming wherever they go. And they are finding a bat rider and now something a bit more. Yeah, this is not looking so good right now for yeah. Fade. But on the flip side of that, again, did see the troll. It was funny because the second that he started to TP out, you saw the TPs coming in from the side of Secret. So his spidey sense was indeed tingling, got himself out in the nick of time, but unfortunately will lose his support. It's always a sign of a carry with very good kind of map sense and understanding of the flow of the game when they're TPing out as those TPs are coming in. They know exactly how to push the hero to the limit. They don't stay a second too long. And Paparazzi, um, you know, one of the best carries out there. Something you see like players like RTZ also really good at. But for Vici Gaming, it's, it's very hard for them because all they can do is kind of split push the map. They have no real good way of fighting into this Enigma right now um, with the BKB Black Hole. And right now the game slowing down is going to be overall pretty good for Secret, who are just able to get a lot more farm out of the map. I'm trying to think, what's the best play then here for Vici? Like you said, there's a little bit of like the split pushing coming through, but just hope that, you know, they take a bad engagement on the side of Secret where, you know, they use the black hole and then try to re-engage. Oh, they are smoked up though now. Yep. All right. Seeing a smoke come through, do you have the, uh, the lasso up? Oh, we've got the Death Prophet ultimate as well. Got everything. Hard to rely on the lasso because the swap safe. Uh, this venge pick fits Dyer's so nicely into Secret's draft. Oh, they actually smoke themselves. Yeah. Smoke on smoke action. Here we go. Be right in the middle here. They don't see it quite yet. They got to notice that one of the creeps is missing. Both teams about to run into they each know, other. The quiet before the storm. Puppy. 
Drop a ward. All right, Fade will reveal himself, and it looks like he's going to be immediately jumped upon, but there's a force up coming through. They're going to try to root up over on the side, and there's a BKB coming out from Yapser. He's going to go ahead and grab two of them here in the middle of all of this, and just OD mid one wants to steal as much of that in as possible, but they did manage to go and get the ghosts off. They're going to turn their attention now over onto the Batrider. Batrider's going to get taken out now. Ori trying to run himself back. There's going to be the buyback coming out, though, immediately from the Batrider. They've got that heal. They've got the save over onto this Death Prophet, but these ghosts, they're just shredding everybody left and right. The Astro Imprisonment comes out. There's no troll in this fight right now. There's a blink forward, though. The Ori's still chasing them down. They've got that Glimmer Cape over here onto the OD. He turns, he drops the hammer. Is he going to be able to find Fate? Fate's going to be able to go just walk just a little bit further out. They've got the Yules, too. Nisha trying to run himself out, and everyone's sitting so very, very low. Paparazzi actually got to be so careful because of that Radiance coming off from the burn. He's going to try to run himself out. Zai finds himself a kill over onto Fate. Are they going to be able to find Paparazzi if they're looking for him? What a oh. kick. He oh, saves it. Kick. And it looks like we will end up losing the Oracle, but... These Roll. fights are insane. He's nobody out. nobody dies for the longest time. The fight goes for like 30 seconds before anyone dies. Like the BKBs were out, all these saves, the Astrals, the swaps, the Oracle false promises are being used. And then it's not until, yeah, all those things are on cooldown as long as the BKBs that you see the first heroes dying. And the problem is for v VG Gaming is by that point, they rely on the troll BKB. They also rely on the exorcism. And exorcism, it lasts a while, but not long out. enough, apparently. It runs out. Now they're able to just go high ground. They don't have to worry. There's no exorcism that they have to face off against. The BKBs are down. I'm feeling very confident right now. Yeah. They don't really have the tools to defend this Rax. Well, it's coming back soon. It looks like they want to make a go on this one. There's the jump for coming out from Paparazzi. Push back Nisha. Secret may just play it safe and go for the shrines here instead. I mean, I think that's enough, right? You're able to yeah, uh, crack the high ground. They've used a whole bunch of their spells. The cooldowns just start getting more and more control of this map. Yeah, one one melee rex is not going to change this game drastically. Um, it's much better to focus on the, the map control aspect, securing yourself the next Roshan. So sticking around um, is not the way you want to play this, but trying to find that next key pickoff is what they're doing here. That's that's how you're going to break this game open. Kill a core again, kill the Death Prophet, kill the troll. So um, when you stay around to try push, you're just, you know, revealing to VG Gaming where you are and you expose yourself. Right. Do you want to buy a gem, it looks like, on the side of VG Gaming? Your spirit with one queued up, feeling like... They need to regain some vision control, and also these, some of these glimmer capes and things in fights are pretty annoying to have to deal with as well. Yeah, the only reason they were able to see mid one for so long was that they actually preemptively dropped themselves a sentry ward just in case. But uh, Fade has picked up that gem of true sight, so hopefully going to be able to survive a little bit longer so it's not immediately in the hands of Secret. But uh, Nisha just walks right on into this base. He's got no fear right now. Just going to chip away at that Rax. Black Hole's coming back up. That's big reason why they, they're okay to take a team fight now and you see Vici Gaming are not even interested in defending it. Um, much like for Secret, it's not the biggest deal trying to overcommit for that melee rex. It's not worth overcommitting to try and defend one melee rex here. 35 minutes in, um, you know, you're still able to easily keep that lane pushed out. You've got Batrider, Troll, Death Prophet. You've got heroes that can keep that lane pushed out as needed. But next Roshan suddenly gets a whole lot more difficult for Vici Gaming to contest with how much map control they've lost over the last 10 minutes or so. And they do have a couple wards out there to give them some information, but it's still pretty dark and you don't know where everyone's going to be lurking. Yeah. And right now it's just so hard for them to secure these kills. Oh, the swap comes out over at the Ori. The Yuzu will be confused. They'll use the will o as well. There's going to be the Black Hole BKB and they've only managed to catch Fade though. That's a pretty decent trade here, but they'll go use the Exorcism, and now it looks like they might just want to disengage on this, so they pop the Exorcism, Will-O-Wisp gets used. They only lose Fade, but that means they lose even more control. Yeah, losing Fade is one thing, but losing Exorcism is a whole lot worse, because they kind of committed to trying to fight around that area with Exorcism, but then suddenly Troll's like, well, I can't actually follow that up. There's a Will-O-Wisp that I'll be running into, and the problem for Troll, every time he goes into the fight, there's Astrals, he's getting kited. Um, even when he's not being kited specifically, the heroes he's going on are being saved, they're being thrown under the Astral. He's not doing damage in a fight because of all these annoying items on the side of Team Secret. They've got several Four Staffs, Glimmer Capes, and it's just so damn hard. I think about going in though, Paparazzi. He's gonna just walk himself out. And I mean, it's gonna be very frustrating because you know that, that Black Hole's down. Black Hole's down, Willow Wisp is down. You wanna go back in because they're not there, but you don't have the Exorcism. That's kind yep. of like your big thing right now. They have got Earth Spirit back. He's respawned now. And Roche is low, so they definitely want to try and contest this one. 
in there though, Young. Okay, Swap comes out from side. They'll turn their attention. Oh, he just evaporates. There was a bad rider there. He's not there any wow. longer. 87 seconds down. Banishment, of course, comes out again. Fade trying to roll himself away. We'll be able to find that opening to run home, but that fight just they yeah. can't. They can't get it's in over. this bit. They this can't. fight that is not, not the game, but they lost the gem there. That is so so bad as far as VG game is concerned. They lose the bat rider who I think just bought this gem, and now that map controls on the secret side. Yeah, they just picked up that gem. Now there's cheese on deck too. How do you take these guys down? <sighs> it's so hard. You're gonna have to play around your high ground defense, the lasso, pulling someone deep inside your base. Problem is, when you initiate with the lasso, somebody has to stop the vengeful spirit from using that swap save. So someone like Earth Spirit needs to silence the venge while you lasso somebody else and pull them deep close to your tier four towers. That's such tricky positioning, though, because they're very aware of yeah. everything. And of course, you know, you've got very good positioning coming from Puppy. He's standing pretty far back. Same thing goes with the officer, making sure that, you know, he can jump into those fights. And again, he's going to have that black hole up in about 10 seconds. Yeah, he's got that off green core, so lower cooldowns across the board. And this is where VG Gaming will be truly tested. I'm like, look at Pop He wants to do anything. He's just dancing around in circles by his own buildings, but he can't get in there just yet. It's just such a safe way to see Chai Ground here. Goes oh. to the deny. Just keep throwing. Okay, gets a lucky bash there over on Demisha Nisha. The rage comes out. It's just going to try to man fight Paparazzi a little bit again as Rome Prism comes through. And Nisha knows they just have no answer to the rage siege that he's posing a threat on the high ground with. He's just going to keep going in whenever he has rage if he wants to. He falls back now just because he says, I get a bit low. I don't want to just throw away my ages for nothing. I can life steal off some of these neutrals. Heal all the way back up to full. And then we can look to go back. Uh, this Aegis, you know, it doesn't... You, so many teams, at least, I think, like the tier two teams make the mistake. Of, oh, we got Rose. Let's go push right now. Mm -hmm. Aegis, the last five minutes. There's no rush. Get your next couple of items and then go for that big push. Now, the time that they've spent, though, where they back off does allow for the Death Prophet to have the Exorcism back up again. Yes. Although, oh no, oh no, as soon as I say that, they find themselves a Death Prophet. They're thinking there's going to be the Blink, though, going out here. Faye going to have to roll himself away. Paparazzi gets a little bit out of the space. I don't know if you want to chase that far. You know that there's going to be Puppy. Puppy's going to have a Willow Wisp or whatnot being thrown at you. And if you don't pop that BKB right away, things could be potentially very, very bad. But uh, they'll turn their attention now. Back to the top. Turning again. Paparazzi getting immediately jumped up by Nisha. Rather slowly crept upon, right? Because it's a life stealer. <laughs> but you know what can they what can they help do? He's just burning the entire time. Fade's gonna get the roll forward, the silence. It's gonna be the banishment again though. And now it looks like Fade in for some trouble. They'll turn around, they've got the glimmer. K paparazzi trying to run back. Willow was asking if he place behind, and now all of a sudden Ori's all alone with this bat rider. They don't have the rest of the team. The BKB comes out, and now Yapster, there's gonna be the swap back, trying to just successfully disengage all the roll forward though again coming out from faith they have their eyes over here onto puppy can they find it there's no more willow wisp it was already used behind the bkb is coming out though they've cut their attention can they burn him down in time zai trying to get out not going to be able to do it there's going to be the infest coming out though over onto the uh, creeps they find a kill over onto puppy in the back lines paparazzi he's in for some trouble they go and they drop the astral he's going to come right back up again he's going to be taken dead he's got to buy back and the silence coming through or he's trying to chip them down it does manage to find that kill over onto yapster can they find the kill onto mid one though they're going to be able to purge him hold him into place this route still chasing after him. He's just running through all of this Firefly. Zai has bought back, so has Yapser. Everyone is just trying to stay alive during this fight, trying to help each other out. Mid one, he's still alive and kicking. There's going to be the swap back, a bit of chaos coming through. And again, they're going to try to slow them down with those axes. They're chasing after Bat Riders and for so much trouble. He is down. The buyback comes out again. Paparazzi running for his life right now. Needs to get up into that base there. Use the black hole, but they actually don't manage to get the kill. They'll get the kill onto the Oracle. And I think that's probably the best bet that you can get right now because you've still got some of these cores up. There's no more exorcism. Them, though. They say Paparazzi who bought back there. That's the key. If he dies there, the game's lost. Then Vici Gaming somehow still alive, but they have to at some point repel secret. But how do they get back in there? They don't have the exorcism. There's going to be a buyback coming out from Faye. Nisha. Nisha's trying to just get himself out. He's got his attention over onto Ori, though, and they've got that spirit siphon. Turn around. Yapsor throws down the midnight pulse. He's being very, very patient. Does not have the black hole, though, Nisha. Again, false promise coming out of onto Paparazzi with the BKB. They want to be able to turn this. They get the stun off. They will be able to take down mid one, and they've got their eyes on more. They get that. That Aegis pop, Paparazzi is sitting quite low right now. Does have the Oracle to back him up. Nisha has to go use that Rage, run himself away. Zai, hot on his heels, trying to just protect him if need be. Let's jump forward again. Young, he really, really wants this. There's going to be Magic Missile. We'll slow him down a little bit. The blink coming out from Death Prophet. She really wants to see if she can get anything else after this out of all of these buybacks. But after that, looks like we'll see the Rax getting slapped upon. <laughs> And unfortunately, uh, Oracle not the best at clearing, but Ori makes his way back. So, uh, break right it down oh. for me, Gus. That was. Wow, that was like. <laughs>
a 90 they, second long team fight or something crazy. They, they, They're saving the Rain Drax. Yeah. <laughs> the Disson, the Kick. Get out of here, Yules. Cardi B. Right. We don't want you here. Rain Drax has been Ooh. kept alive somehow. Not the biggest save. It doesn't have health regen, unfortunately, so it's the easiest thing in the it's world the to morale, kill. Right? Yeah, it really is. Yeah. <laughs> we did it, guys. We saved it. After a team fight like that, that was just like the most nutty, chaotic 90 seconds of Dota. Yeah, it, that, that's a great way to finish it off. You save your rain tracks. Um, but holy cow, I mean, there was just so much going on there. The fact Beachy Gaming. <laughs> the replay of the. <laughs> Beautiful. Earth Spirit Fade has been. We need some epic music to go with that, right? <laughs> Look at that. Ah, oh, not today. Forces of the Dire. Fade's been fun out. to watch. Like, saving the troll down bottom. He's making all kinds of great Earth Spirit plays. I mean, it, it really is a desperate position, uh, and you need every kind of key clutch play in the book right now. And they're somehow holding on. Um, it's coming down to, you know, some ballsy play. They controlled the App Store so well in that last fight. He was just, he used his BKB early to try to get off his Black Hole, got controlled. The Death Prophet being on top of him meant that he didn't want to use the Black Hole on Death Prophet. He wants to use on Troll. And by the time he re-engaged, there was a silence. He didn't have his BKB up and they just understood how to deal with him. Now we did just get a refresher orb picked up on Death Prophet and that's nice. going to be huge because they don't know that she has it. Granted, we did get the Abyssal Belly picked up over on the uh, Life Stealer and we got an Axe picked up on Zai as well. Okay. So we've got a lot of these big items that just got picked up. I think it comes down to who gets the jump on who though. Yes. Because um, I'm not going to be expecting Death Prophet and I, I love this pickup, right? Because she's had to use it to fight almost every single time. I haven't been able to, I think like very, very early on, maybe she took like a tower or something, but now she's got the option, either she can, you know, fight and then also push with it. If another fight gets brought to her door, I don't even think she has buyback though at this time. Who, who has buyback? The fights last so long that it feels like, yeah. It... <laughs> no one has buyback. Okay, that's easy. Easy enough. Ooh, the swap though coming out over here on the right. There's going to be a four step forward. Trying to run her out in time. BKB comes out with the false promise. They're going to try to keep her alive. Black Hole comes out. Actually, we'll be able to go and grab Fade over onto the side. Paparazzi waiting very, very patiently. BKB just got picked up for Young and they're going to be able to take down Fade. Willow was going to get used as well here. And Ori, he's got the exercise. And they're just going to chase them down. Has that spirit siphon? The jump forward coming out from Bad Rider. They're going to turn their attention over here onto this lifestyle. And all they really want is to be able to. To take him down as fast as possible. Nisha trying to run himself out. Is he going to be able to do it in time? Can he get an infest up or anything? A Silas? No, he's going to be taken out. There's no buyback now on this lifestyle. And look at this Death Prophet. She is out for blood. She's going to turn her attention to this OD. They don't have anything to cancel out that TP. The so mid one going to be able to make it out of this engagement. But there is no life stealer for 80 something seconds. Flip they side lost of that. the range tracks. The fight was lost. They couldn't keep the range tracks <laughs> alive. Moxie. All right. <laughs> Call it Vici Gaming. <laughs> but, uh, phew. Uh, and somehow, I, I, VG Gaming play these fights so well, and it still just doesn't feel like they're winning them. At least, I mean, they kill Lifestyle. Yeah, that's a win for them, but it's not that convincing. Oh, we killed three, four heroes, and then we're going to go push down mid lane. It's, well, we killed one, and we had to use everything. We had to throw the entire thing. They didn't have to sink. use everything. They still have a, oh, yeah, they have the refresher on yeah. the Ori, you know? They... But he's, the swaps have just been on point, though. Again, the Yules comes out. They need a save, though. They don't have their Oracle up and running. Silence going to get used over here onto Ori, and they're going to be able to turn around over onto Troll, and they just... Oh, no! Oh, oh baby! There was a Troll and a Death Prophet there. They are no longer on this plane with us. Yeah, that was quite the sanity's drop. Look at that. Oh, my word. Yeah, they stuck around way too long, considering... I mean, Ori had the second ultimate, but you don't want to fight here. You don't have the save, as you mentioned, and also he didn't have BKB. There was no way to take that team fight without BKB, but he does buy back and he does have BKB plus Exorcism now. Well, four coming out from Fade again. Silence. They'll go and use the second Exorcism and the Spirit Siphon coming through. Fade looking if he can grab anyone. BKB coming out over on for Ori and the same thing coming out for Batrider too. Zai trying to run himself back right now. And yeah, sorry, he uses his own BKB. They've got that Willow Whistle Swap coming out from Zai though, trying to reposition again. Lasso's going to come out though over onto mid one. There's going to be another swap though going through. Ori, he's got the Fade False Promise on him. Just really wants to run down this OD, but he's going to be able to walk himself away. Over onto the corner though. It looks like Young yeah, in for some trouble. There's just too many people there. For him, is going to be able to take down Bad Rider. There is no buyback on him. And mid one, he's still ready. The swap comes out again from Zai. He is not done yet. He really wants to get this Oracle. They'll turn their attention, though, to Fade, and they'll be able to take him out again. The other swap, GG gets called. One final black hole for good measure. As Secret runs over Vichy Gang. There's just so many tools that Secret have to 